Would it surprise you to learn that the third prince of Orkney, William St. Clair, began to build a chapel in Scotland that would represent a place of worship that was intended to pray for the soul of the founder and to spread intellectual and spiritual knowledge. Something was built by this man that is now considered a wonder of the world with its extraordinary architecture and carvings that have also inspired generations of stories and legends about the place and this has meant its fame has endured over the centuries. In the town of Roslyn, close to Midlothian, in the heart of Scotland, exists one of the most surprising enigmas of ancient architecture in the world. Ever since it was founded in 1446, Roslyn Chapel has astonished its visitors with spectacular arrays of craftsmanship that has been linked with everything we don't understand in this world. Researchers from the Oak Island Treasury Hunt have been lured here as well as the chapel being linked with extraterrestrial activity and musical complexities that are heard in the acoustics. But the real mystery, some say, is what lies beneath this spectacular building. It is said that at this place there are answers to be found and the popular yet mysterious chapel was propelled into Global Eye in 2003 when Dan Brown's publication of The Da Vinci Code and this chapel now receives global attention as a result. The Da Vinci Code explored the chapel's connections to the notorious Knights Templar and this appealed to the treasure hunters on Oak Island as the connections appear to be overwhelming with the expectation of missing pieces of the puzzle. But what has been found is eye-opening and draws serious conclusions if the connections are real, but it really depends on the researcher, how deep you want to go on the matter, and how serious you are on the subject matter, as these hidden truths may threaten your perspective and knowledge if it is known. Well, that's the feel you get from the story anyway. An overview of the story and the conclusion of this theory can entangle the crucifixion cross, the blood of Jesus, the head of Jesus, the Holy Grail, and the Knights Templar themselves. A story that covers thousands of years of time and distance and leads us on an apparent path to the truth. But is it for real? The story goes that in 1119, the Roman Catholic Church founded the Order of the Knights Templar in Jerusalem to protect Catholics and other European visitors on a pilgrimage to the Holy Lands, which were under Muslim control at this time. The devout knights in the Order of the Templar Cross became increasingly militarized and carried out Holy Order as soldiers of Christ. They were exempt from all local laws and answered only to the Pope who endorsed their every action. Their innovation banking system throughout the Crusades gave them power over a thousand fortifications and they were always the first into battle under the will of God. They were the equivalent of the Marine Corps today. During the Crusades, they acquired remains of the Solomon's Temple that's referenced in the Bible. It is not known what they found there, but speculation is rife that it would have been the Holy Grail. But whatever it was, it made them extraordinarily powerful, and they seem to have tried to hide the power on Oak Island before they were eventually burned at the stake in Paris by the king in 1314. But legend says many of the Templars escaped to Scotland with the treasure from Solomon's Temple. It was a safe place to hide. They weren't outlawed there and they owned land. One of their properties was only nine miles from Rosalind Chapel and there is real connection that Oak Island is simply a decoy and the treasure is buried at Rosalind Chapel. There are many theories that support this idea that St. Clair family had ties with the Templars. Robert the Bruce fought with them. The chapel has a hidden chamber and there are Templar symbols within the chapel that clearly suggest there is something present here either in a physical form and buried at the site or in the many anomalous architectural pieces that could somehow be a cipher code to a map that is yet to be discovered. 
Father Hay, author of a genealogy of the St. Clairs of Rosalind, describes the start of Sir William St. Clair's plan for the chapel when he states, It came into his mind to build a house for God's service, of most curious work, the which that it might be done with greater glory and splendor. He caused artificers to be brought from other regions and foreign kingdoms, and caused daily to be abundance of all kinds of workmen present as masons, carpenters, smiths, borrowmen, and quarries. The intrigue has attracted the celebrity of the day from almost every generation in living memory. Famous poets including Sir Walter Scott and Rabbi Burns visited the chapel, as well as visits by Queen Victoria, who in 1842 ordered it to be preserved for the people of Scotland. Upon her visit, restoration work began, and just 20 years after she went there, the restoration work carried out by the architect David Bryce, 3rd Earl of Roslyn, made the chapel usable again. Sunday services consequently began at the chapel for the first time in over 200 years. Dan Brown describes it as the most magical and mysterious chapel on earth in his story. The main characters investigate a murder in the Louvre and in doing so, follow a set of clues to unravel a mystery, taking them to London and then to Rosalind Chapel. It is estimated that 81 million copies of the book have been published, making it one of the most popular of all time. You can easily spot symbolism in a lot of cathedrals and churches. You find the stories of Christ, the Virgin Mary, and all the saints. But in Rosalind Chapel, there are unexplained motifs. Then there's a carving of corn. This may sound like the most uninteresting thing in this mighty chapel, but it's completely, maddeningly mind-blowing because it looks exactly like a cob of corn and this chapel predates Christopher Columbus' journey to America. How on earth did Scotland know about America's indigenous plant life? Most famously, you find the Green Man carvings. There are a hundred of these dotted around the chapel. But why? The Green Man symbolizes the pagan gods that Christianity had banished. So why would this church allow them to be depicted everywhere? We will leave it at that for the moment, guys, and you can let us know what you are thinking on the matter. So sign the comments section below, and as always, thank you for watching.